To transform myself into Red Skull, I had to chop off my nose, my ears, and have subdermal implants. Somebody call Captain America. Now, I am a huge comic book fan, and I'm a massive fan of the MCU, but I would never transform myself into a character in the MCU. And if I did, I think I would choose like Thor, or Captain America, or Iron Man, or even Spider-Man, but the Red Skull, why would you choose the Red Skull? He's a bad guy, for God's sakes. And to become the Red Skull, you have to cut your nose off. Well, let's find a little bit more about what's going on here, because this is definitely very extreme. So this is the Red Skull before he had any surgery. And as you can see, he's a good-looking guy, hasn't had anything done. How do you get from that to that? The eyes were the most impactful. And when I wash my face and look up in the mirror, it really struck me, you know? So I believe that this was the first thing that he did and probably is the most risky of all the procedures that he's done to his face. This is eye tattooing. Not tattooing of your eyelids, but your actual eyes. Ink is basically injected underneath the sclera, which is a white part of your eye, as a way to color that part of the eye. And you can't just inject one area, you have to inject it all the way around to get that ink to completely go circumferentially around your iris and your pupil. Now the reason why this is so dangerous is because people have actually gone blind from these injections. And you have to keep in mind, that this injection is not done by an ophthalmologist, okay? It's dangerous enough if you have an ophthalmologist, a real eye doctor, do it. It's done by a layperson who essentially is a body modification expert. That person does not have any training in the actual anatomy and physiology of the eye and has not performed operations on the eye, hence increasing its risk even more. I do not recommend anybody undergo eyeball tattooing. After that, we inserted these subdermal implants in my forehead. And from that point on, the project really started to take life. So this appears to be really the beginning of his journey into extreme body modification. Now, body modification encompasses all sorts of different treatments, ranging from, I think, the least invasive, which would be tattooing, to the most invasive, which are things that he's having done. Most people who undergo body modification will do relatively minor things, like let's say gauge the ears so that the ear lobes are much larger. Maybe they'll get some subdermal types of piercings where you can see they've got a metal piercing that goes through the skin that's kind of permanent. But his changes are definitely very, very extreme. These two teas are a one-two punch for radiant, healthy skin. You start the day with Peak Tea's Sun Goddess Matcha, the best matcha in the world. Matcha is like green tea, but instead of steeping your tea in the leaves, the actual green tea leaves are dissolved into the drink. This gives you a huge increase in antioxidants and chlorophyll. So matcha just might be the most skin healthy drink there is. In addition, it contains both caffeine to give you a morning boost and L-theanine, which is a calming ingredient to prevent crashes and jitteriness. So Peak Tea's Sun Goddess Matcha is the perfect skin healthy drink to start your day. So what do you do in the evening? When the sun goes down, you have to try Peak Tea's Hibiscus Beauty Elixir. Hibiscus was used by Cleopatra in ancient Egypt for its skin calming properties. It is also filled with antioxidants like vitamin C, which promote healthy skin by fighting off free radicals and oxidation. It's caffeine free and therefore the perfect calming and relaxing drink for evening time. These two teas combined make up Peak Tea's Clear Skin Ritual. For a limited time, get 15% off plus a rechargeable frother and a beaker cup if you shop my link at peaklife.com forward slash Dr. Yoon. That's peaklife.com forward slash Dr. Yoon. The link is in the caption below. 
So here he is in 2012. You can see he had his eyeballs dyed, and now he's got some of those subdermal implants into his forehead. These implants are typically made of silicone. The reason why silicone is used is because it's relatively inert. That's why we use it in breast implants and other types of implants for the body. The main risk with placing a subdermal implant like this into the body is that it can potentially erode through the skin with time. We have seen that in patients who have, let's say, nose jobs and a silicone implant is placed over the top of their nose. And they can also get infected or they can get scar tissue that develops around them called a capsular contracture. We see this, unfortunately, with breast implants, not uncommonly. I'll give up my name and give up my legacy. There might be many who come after me, but I'm the first person in the world to achieve what I've achieved. As one of the only human beings to have successfully embodied the cartoon character. So I have to say, he's pretty successful in looking like the Red Skull. He does actually look like the Red Skull. I still don't understand though, why would you choose the Red Skull over all the different characters out there? The Red Skull is a bad guy. He's a Nazi. Once we're in enemy territory, as a bushwhacking guerrilla army, we're going to be doing one thing and one thing only, killing Nazis. He is not a good person. So I would think that if you're going to transform him into somebody, you would pick like, a good guy character. And if you don't want to be like Captain America, then how about the Wolverine? How about the Incredible Hulk? Or even the Toad? So one year later, he underwent probably the most dramatic of his operations, where you can see that the end of his nose has been cut off. And you can see those sutures putting the skin back together. Now, the nose is composed of bone and cartilage. The part of the nose that's closest basically to the skull is made of bone. And then right when you get about halfway down, it becomes all cartilage. So in this situation, it looks like they essentially removed all the cartilage from his nose, including the septum, which is the cartilage that lies between the nostrils. This type of operation is performed for cancer patients occasionally. It also has been performed back in the medieval times as a punishment sometimes for women who have cheated on their husbands. The main issue I have with performing this operation as I guess a cosmetic operation is that the hairs and the end of your nose is meant to actually hydrate the air that comes into your body. If you don't hydrate that, you're gonna expose your lungs potentially to more risks of illness, like let's say bacteria and other pathogens that are not filtered through the nose hairs and the portions of the nose that filters the air. So he could be putting himself at higher risk of infections like bronchitis and pneumonia. Now he's representing Venezuela and traveling through Europe being the main attraction on tattoo conventions. I do bet that he would do well on the Comic-Con circuit because he does look so much like the Red Skull. And the good thing, I guess, is that he's making a living by doing this and hopefully he's using his powers for good. So it looks like the next step that he did here in 2015 is that he implanted subdermal implants over his brows. And this has given him that kind of lumpy brow that you can see in this picture. I think myself that this would feel really, really strange. You know, now I've had Botox, actually I actually had Daxify to my wrinkles here. And if you ever talk to somebody who's had too much Botox in their forehead, it can make their forehead look and feel heavy. And for some people that can be a really not so good feeling if it's overdone. And I can imagine that putting subdermal implants into your brows will create a heavy feeling to your eyebrows. That's something I would think would be quite uncomfortable as time went on. I have an excellent relationship with my son. He sees me as a superhero, as a super dad. I've met a lot of people who've undergone extreme body modification, not to the extent of, of him. And if you've never really encountered people who've done a lot of body modification, on the surface, a lot of people think that they must be weird, they must not be very nice. Uh, and really what I found is the exact opposite. The people who I've met who've had a lot of body modification seem to be very down to earth, they're very kind. Oftentimes they're, they're even a little bit shy, but they're the exact opposite of what you might think in your head that somebody who wants their face to look like the red skull <laughs> would actually be. So what did he do now in 2019? If you look at his forehead, you can see there are a lot more subdermal implants in that forehead. And once again, I tell you that all of that weight of those implants to me seems like it would be really uncomfortable uh, but seems like he likes it.
My mother died when I was very young, when I was roughly 15 or 16 years old. It was an impact, social and visual for all my family, when they saw me like this for the first time. But of course, I've always had this obsession with tattooing. He also appears to have tattooed his face red. Of all these things that he's done, that obviously is probably the least of the invasive types of treatments, but it makes a big difference, obviously, in his appearance. So now you can see he split his tongue. Now one very interesting thing about splitting a tongue, first of all, usually this is not done with any true anesthetic. So you're awake, it's not numbed up, because once again, these are not physicians who are performing this procedure. But what's even more interesting about this is that when you split a tongue in half, those two sides of the tongue can move independently of each other. It doesn't work that way if your tongue is not split, but when it splits, for some reason, those muscles can move very independently. And it's actually quite cool to watch. I've known him for a while. This is my business. He's polite and he knows how to treat people properly. A good person. I consider him a good man. I still can't get over the fact of why a guy who appears to be a really nice, polite family man would transform his face into a Nazi supervillain. I mean, the Red Skull, he's bad news. So as you can see, this is him this year in 2023. He looks very happy. This is not the Red Skull from the movies, that's for sure. You don't give up, do you? No. But I'm glad that he likes his transformation because I guess that's the most important thing in the end. It's to demonstrate to people that we can't judge by appearances. So if you think that the Red Skull is extreme, then you will be shocked at the Black Alien Project, which I react to right here. This guy takes body modification to the utmost extreme. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and auto-juvenate before you operate.